I'm trying not to use the kind of hyperbole of really grand pronouncements because I am a nuts and bolts person. Even with the rocketry stuff, I wasn't talking about colonizing Mars. I was talking about which bolts I'm using to hold things together. So I don't want to do a TED talk going on and on about all the things that might be possible with plausibly cost-effective artificial general intelligence. But especially the pandemic showed that more things than people thought could be done strictly through a computer interaction stream where you can communicate over the computer modalities like Zoom, email, chats, Discord, all these things, a large fraction of the world's value today can run on that. And if you have an artificial agent that behaves like a human being, even in our narrow AIs today, the world of deep fakes and chatbots and voice synthesis, it's clear that we can simulate the human modalities there. We do not yet have the learnable stream of consciousnesses of a coworker in AI, but we do have kind of this oracular amount of knowledge that can be brought forward. You'll find people who can wax rhapsodic about the singularity and how everything is going to change with AGI. But if I just look at it and say, if 10 years from now, we have universal remote employees that are artificial general intelligences run on clouds and people can just dial up and say, I want five Franks today and 10 Amy's and we're going to deploy them on these jobs and you could just spin up like you can cloud access computing resources if you could cloud access essentially artificial human resources for things like that. That's the most prosaic, mundane, most banal use of something like this. If all we're doing is making more human level capital and applying it to the things that we're already doing today, while you could say, I wanna make a movie or a comic book or something like that, give me the team that I need to go do that, and then run it on the cloud, that's kind of my vision for it. There's a path that leads from today's virtual assistants, your Cirrus, Alexis, and Google assistants, to being more and more helpful, taking over more and more tasks. But those are fairly brittle, specialized implementations of things. Various knowledge representations, voice synthesis, voice understanding, and that's probably not the path to a general intelligence that's flexible for a whole bunch of purposes. They have thousands of programmers literally working right now on adding capabilities to those assistants, and there is near-term value in that. The programming work that's done to stitch those things together is going to be throwaway programming, but that path doesn't lead to the general agent that can learn any task that a human can. The things dealing with perception, like understanding someone's voice and even synthesizing voices naturally, those were the things that computers did not do well at all 10 or 15 years ago. The joke in the 90s was that you had a computer that could beat the world chess champion handily, but a computer couldn't do things that a two-year-old could do. It couldn't tell a cat from a dog. There was no computer product in the world that could do the simple, trivial perception things because it turned out that's what our brain actually does. It's much more about perception and pattern matching. And it was sort of the sophistry of the people then to think instead that it's about these philosophical symbol manipulation things. And that led AI astray really for decades. There were all these really blind alleys that turned out to be fragile things and not very commercially valuable. It just wasn't the way things worked. But then came the revolution of this last decade with deep learning and the deep connectionist approaches. We actually can do all those things that the two-year-olds can do in terms of perception. And in many of these, we're at a superhuman level. The thing we don't yet have is sort of the consciousness, the associative memory, the things that have a life and goals and planning. And there are these brittle, fragile AI systems that can implement any one of those things. But it's still not the way the human brain or even the animal brain works. I mean, forget human brains. We don't even have things that can act like a mouse or a cat. But it feels like we are within striking distance of all those things. I think that almost certainly the tools that we've got from deep learning in this last decade will be able to ride those to artificial general intelligence. There are some of the structural things that we don't understand yet about these other fields, like you have reinforcement learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning. All of those come together in the way humans think about things, and we don't have the final synthesis of all that yet.